So, excuse me, Spider, just yeah, for a minute, but <laughs> Dr. McPhee, let's talk about cats. Again, relating to the human types of diabetes, cats are different. Yes, with cats, typically like humans, we see more type two diabetes, so non-insulin dependent um, diabetes. And um, that's something that, again, more people can relate to because they're aware of it because of type two diabetes being more prevalent in humans. Um, but that is something that... Uh, and these tend to be, I mean, hist I guess typically they're, they're, they tend to be obese cats, yes. older cats, yeah. cats that are, are you know, exercising very much, kind of, kind of just like people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and as you know, diabetes is a multifactorial disease, so there's a number of different things that obviously influence whether a pet gets diabetes, obesity being one of the risk factors. But I do always caution my clients not to think that it's just a disease for overweight animals, because sometimes we do see cats that are thin that have diabetes. Some of the times that's because it's a chronic and right. people haven't picked it up until the pet starts losing weight. Um, but it is definitely more common in neutered male cats that are obese. And the, the signs, do you, do you feel in your practice that they're different than the signs in dogs? Or? No, again, the most common early signs of diabetes are going to be increased thirst, increased urination, increased appetite, despite the fact that they're not gaining weight and may, in fact, be losing weight, yeah. um, and then lethargy. Yeah, and even seeing, you know, a lot of cats, you never see them drink. So yes, if yeah. you see a cat drinking, if it's yeah. at the bowl drinking, yeah. something might be and, wrong. And it's either kidneys or diabetes yeah. or hyperthyroidism. You know, and it's one of those things, again, that we were talking about screening tests in cats cats, they're masters at hiding illness. Yes. So it's really important that people do those screening tests because dogs and cats can't speak. They can't tell us when they're hungry, when, you know, when they're not feeling well. And so um, that's one of the things that a lot of times my clients really relate to as I explain the fact that your pet can't tell you when, you know, when they're not feeling well. And so these screening tests are very important right. for and that. That's a whole other topic of how yes. we get cats to go to the vet. <laughs> but it's an important topic because it people... Is. People will take their dog to, mm -hmm. to, to preventative care, and then only they'll only take their cat when the cat's really sick. And cats are really good at hiding illness. They are. So this is this is a really important point to, to bring them in early and often, yep. and to do those to and, do those. And tests. like you mentioned earlier, um, diabetes, like other diseases, is much easier to manage when it's caught early. Yeah. So again, that's really the key message: is just the screening tests, the exams, going to see your vet regularly, because the earlier we catch it, the better the prognosis is. And cats, I know you're going to ask me about this, but cats can go into remission as well. So they can. Um, they can. So that is another reason to really be picking up diabetes early. How did you know I was going to ask you about that? Because <laughs> it's a great, it's it, a it, gr great right. news it's, for it, cats, I know. Right? There's actually some major developments in cats yes. you know, with, with good monitoring and exercise. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, that's and hard diet. to do in cats. But diet, diet mm -hmm. has really become a, an important thing in cats. So yes. we, we can do a lot with cats.